Welcome back to video series on Intro to Highway Transportation Engineering and this is module 3 in the series. Module 3 is all about highway alignment. In this part, part 3A that is, an overview on highway alignment is presented. Let's get started. Alignment of highways can't exactly be in a straight line like this. Even if it is, I'm not sure if it's a good thing. In highway alignment, we often change direction. Changing direction on a highway is not the same as changing direction at intersections, which often happens at 90 degree angles, right? At intersection, you stop or significantly slow down for change in direction. The change in direction on a highway, on the other hand, has to happen without stopping or slowing down. That process of designing for change in direction of travel on a highway is called horizontal alignment. What you see here is a horizontal curve, which is a part of horizontal alignment. And the purpose of this curve is to change direction without stopping or slowing down too much. As you can visually see, the curve itself is very tight, or you may also call it a steep curve. Or the change can be very gradual like this. This is a horizontal curve with flat curvature or alternatively you call it a large radius curve. While negotiating a curve like this, you don't need to slow down at all. You can often proceed at high speeds, say 65 or even 70 miles per hour in a curve like this. We can't always have a flat terrain to construct the highway. Therefore, we will also have to change elevation along the highway, which we call vertical alignment. Vertical curves are part and parcel of vertical alignment. This is an example of vertical curves. You can see the elevation change along this highway marked by this valley and also by this hill, which of course you cannot see from here, but trust me, there is a hill there. Curves in the valley are called sag vertical curves and curves on the hill are called crest vertical curves. Let's get back to that steep horizontal curve once again. Intuitively, you know, you can't drive at good speed on a curve like this without compromising safety, correct? It's a steep curve because its radius is small. In the case of vertical curves, it's often the length of the curve that matters, meaning the length of the curve dictates safe speeds on the curve. When we talk about speed and radius, we are talking about vehicle dynamics and road geometry. And that's your segue. Highway alignment is all about vehicle dynamics and road geometry. Principles of highway alignment. Highway alignment is a three-dimensional problem. And as you can imagine, three-dimensional construction is complicated. To understand the highway alignment principles, therefore, we deal with 2D problems, two-dimensional problems. For horizontal alignment, we will deal with plan view and X and Z coordinates, and for vertical alignment, we will deal with X and Y coordinates, all too familiar X, Y coordinates. And as I mentioned earlier, highway alignment involves vehicle dynamics and geometry. Topics in this module, or parts if you prefer that, include the following. Overview of highway alignment, which is this part, and there is a review of equal tangent parabola, which is surveying fundamentals about parabola. And then within vertical alignment, we have crest vertical curves and sag vertical curves, which is followed by a review of circular curves and their formula, which is important for horizontal alignment. The learning outcomes of this module. At the end of this module, you should be able to list the elements of highway alignment and design highway alignment and cross-sectional elements for crest and sag vertical curves as well as horizontal curves. And also, additionally, you should be able to explain the role of MUTCD in traffic control and communicating and how MUTCD plays a role in communicating the design elements with drivers. And that marks the end of part 3A. Dhaniwad.